Hello doll filiacs, I'm Ray and this is another custom doll video. Um, this is an Ever After High Madeline Hatter. We got her off of eBay. Um, her hair was already removed and I just removed her outfit, but I need to pop her head off to begin this and get rid of her factory paint using acetone. Um, really and truly for this custom doll, I didn't have like a di direction or a trajectory. Uh, so it kind of morphed as it went along. Um, and I am, I am very happy with how she turns out and just here wiping off that factory paint with the acetone and even using a Q-tip to get in those little nooks and crannies. And I wanted to try some new things for this particular custom just to practice new techniques. Um, one of which is rerouting, which I've tried before but did a horrible job, but I also wanted to play with body modifications. So here I am actually, oh, oh no, here I am actually getting wire ready because I want to attempt to make a pair of horns for her. Um, I kind of envisioned her as like a fantasy kind of creature, like she would live in a magical world. Um, and it kind of just morphed from there and you'll see as the process goes along, but I'm folding some wire, uh, and then just sticking it in through the head hole, twisting the two pieces that come out the neck so that it will stay against the head. And then I'm twisting and twisting and twisting until I have like a core wire. I do that on both sides and then shape them. And I thought it looked pretty good. I was satisfied with it, the shape, the size, uh, whipped out the epoxy sculpt and the gloves. Always make sure you have the gloves. This is some toxic stuff, so gotta, gotta keep it safe. Uh, took one part of A, one part of B, one for each horn, so four parts total, I guess. Mashed them together and then sculpted like this tube thing of the epoxy sculpt and kind of just fitted it around the wire as like the core and just squished everything into place. And I was, I was really happy with it at this point. And definitely with trying new things in this video, cause I did try a lot of new techniques, but I had to constantly remind myself that mistakes would be made. So you'll see, but this is me starting the reroute process. In hindsight, I should have just, you know, rerouted the hair first and then did the horn stuff but you know we all make mistakes and that's that's what this process is about so i am starting that reroute process this is actually the same aqua blue hair oh and i've already bent one of the yeah i'm really good at this guys so while i take a break from the reroute i thought that i would start on the horns and i figured blue hair why not blue horns so i did this like gradient effect with acrylic paints um going from like a light sky blue to more of like a deeper more rich blue and then uh those horns <laughs> broke so <laughs> I had to toss those out and I just continued the reroute and the um, paint left over like these little circles on the side of the head. So I just used those as future guidelines, but I just finished out the reroute with all of this blue hair. She looks like a Smurf that got electrocuted, but I am using Fabri-Tac in through the neck hole to just sort of squish around in there and get all of those hair plugs settled. Then I moved on to the new set of horns, uh, which I think turned out much better. I just did the same process, wire folded in half, twisted it around a bunch, um, and I used that Sharpie to kind of bend it into shape. Whipped out the epoxy sculpt and some coffee because I was really tired at this point and it was also very early, early in the morning. Went through the same exact process, used the epoxy sculpt, squished it around the wire core. I used like a pinching technique to make little ridges and then water on my fingertip to smooth things out and let it cure overnight before painting it. And the colors that we are going to use are Burnt Umber, Primary Magenta 3, <laughs> and uh, Venetian Red. And I just thought that these would be a great combination for some, I guess, classic looking horns. At this point, I was kind of envisioning a, like a slight dragon aesthetic, 
with how these horns turned out. So just giving them a coat in the brown, I think this is the burnt umber, and then applying some of this primary magenta just to give it a little more color and tone. Because overall, I feel like if I just did browns, it wouldn't have the same sort of like warmth or or like authenticity to it. So I wanted to give it a little bit of that primary magenta. And then for the very tip, I'm doing that Venetian red and just trying to get a nice blend going. I do have to go over them a couple of times to get it to look right, but I'm really happy with how these turned out. They look really good to me. They, they do look like little dragon horns. And I even went back with some dark, dark brown, basically black um, pastels and just brush in little details on the ridges and you can see it with and without. And now back to the hair. Ugh. So I have sectioned it off as you can see. Um, I am just getting a damp towel and my iron and just ironing down the hair a little bit, not holding it in one place for too long just to kind of settle it down some for a good trim, putting it back into its sections. And then I had decided that I wanted to give her like tight little waves or curls. So I tried getting some like leftover McDonald's straws and wrapping her hair around it and pinning it down, but I could not get it to stay. Um, so I kind of gave up on that temporarily while I thought of a plan and decided to attach her horns instead. Um, mistake number five billion in this video. <laughs> but I plugged them back in through the head. I did have to make the holes a little bit bigger because they had shrunk for some reason, but plugging them back in through the head and then pulling the excess through the neck, twisting it so that it locks into place. And that's all I had to do to attach these horns. I did go back with some hot glue on the surface where the horns connect to the top of the head just to give it a little bit more stability because these horns are really big, another mistake of mine, oops, and they are a little bit heavy because of it. Yeah, definitely should have made smaller horns, but had to use hot glue to kind of reinforce the attachment at the head. Oh, and before I forget, this is actually what I was trying to say earlier, is that this blue hair is actually the same hair that we used for our Pokemon doll uh, that we already have a video up for. If you want to go check that out, you can always look through our videos, but this is the same hair that we used for her. Then we are on to the face up. So I wrap her hair and horns in this, what was supposed to be like a COVID mask, but much better suits this situation. And I sprayed her a couple of times with Mr. Super Clear before I started using the soft pastels and a brush to kind of start contouring the face and giving a little bit of color and depth. I did add a little bit of a lip color and I tried doing the pastels for the whites of the eyes a little early just to see if it made a difference. I'm not entirely sure. Here I'm using a very light pink watercolor pencil to start the eyes. And I wanted to give her like a half closed looking off to the side, um, kind of mischievous look in a way. Here I'm going in with the black watercolor pencil and a blue watercolor pencil to do the eyeliner and the waterline area. Then I am actually going in with a white watercolor pencil to start brightening everything up to get the sclera prepared and the iris prepared for color. I even do a couple of like small highlights here on the lips and then I wanted to give her kind of like these royal blue pencil thin eyebrows and so I started with like a, a blue color in the middle um, and then tapered it out to a black at the end. And I wanted to give her almost like a velvety look for her lips, so I really took my time blending in pastels and watercolor pencils of like a light pink 
a magenta sort of color and then like a deep purple a little bit of blush on the cheeks and then i wanted to give her kind of like a dragon scale feel to her forehead area i felt like it was kind of plain and that it would it would help to add more elements and make the horns a bit more cohesive with the character and here i'm actually starting to go in and give color to the eyes doing like a gradient effect with pink and magenta and purple just so I can get a little bit of depth in there between layers, starting on the eyeshadow, and just really wanting to pull a lot of color into her face. So again, messing with blue and purple, um, and then I kind of mixed brown and magenta to make kind of like a umber red color, trying to give her that kind of mysterious vibe, very almost vixen-like but still on a very innocent face, I think it looks really good. And the best part is adding the acrylic paint. I get so scared whenever I have to start this part of the face up. Um, it just makes me really nervous that I'm gonna mess up, but we do a pretty good job here, getting the white of the scaleras, putting like a little highlight at the bottom of the eye. I tried to do some like highlighting striations in the uh, in the eyes uh, and i think they turned out okay it may have been a little heavy-handed going in with a black acrylic paint to do the eyeliner and all of the lashes and taking the liquitex varnish to do the eyes and the lips. I actually really love how her lips turned out most of all. And for the eyes, I just uh, just varnished the iris part for photography purposes. Now back to the hair. We are going to try and give her these waves. So I'm gonna try to boil wash her and I have hot water and cold water here. And her horns are too big. They, they just won't fit in the bowl properly. And I even tried bending them a little and it made me very uncomfortable. So I ended up having to get boiling water and gently, very carefully pour it over her head, um, avoiding the face and the horns as best as I could. And now just undoing all of those braids, taking off all the rubber bands, and then I'll be separating them into hopefully some beautiful waves. Uh, I just love her hair, but we need to move on to her outfit. Um, I wanted to try and make her some kind of puff sleeve, so I'm using this muslin as a first attempt. Um, I tried two different sleeve types, and I ended up going with the bishop sleeve after everything was said and done. And I went ahead and cut out the rest of the pieces for the dress that I'm going to make for her in this sort of burgundy fabric and with like teal accents so like the teal trim around the edges and the cuffs as well but here is my cutout for the bishop sleeve I'm going to do the gathering stitch at the bottom and top and then this is the cuff and once it's gathered I'm going to attach them right sides together then I will fold them right sides together and sew along the inside only after it's been attached to the bodice and that will create the sleeve effect. And here they are. I think they look pretty good for, you know, my first time making a doll sized puff sleeve, but I did the gathering stitch, like I said, sewed them right sides together. When I added the teal cuff, I did the same thing. I sewed it right sides together and then I just added the lace myself And here we have the pieces for the bodice itself. We have the front piece and then the two back panels that will be open in the back so that we can make an enclosure for her. 
on this front piece, I did cut a little slit down the front and I plan on gluing those flaps to the side to kind of make like the finished collar look for her. So we'll go ahead and sew the shoulders and then sew the sleeves to the bodice and then sew down the side seams. This is just the circle that we cut out for her skirt. I did end up cutting out a little bit short of one fourth of the circle just because I thought it was a little too big. Um, it still turned out a little too big, but that's quite all right. I didn't have enough length of this teal fabric left, so I had to make two pieces that I'm gonna sew together and then sew around the bottom of the skirt as the trim. After multiple attempts and refusing to record it all because I hate sewing, we ended up with this. And I think it is so stinking cute. I also made a little bow to go on her back. It is attached with a snap, um, but it's just a length of that black lace with a light teal ribbon glued down the middle of it. And then I just created a little bow and just threw a snap on it, pretty easy. But I, I actually really like how this dress turned out and I can't wait to dazzle it up a little bit for you guys. So as far as embellishing on her outfit. I don't wanna to go too crazy. Probably just gonna use some of these light teal pearls that I have over here, these half pearls, um, and just a few of the lighter colored um, blues and clear colors on the rhinestones, a little bit of gold cord and ribbon. However, in my opinion, I did go a little insane with the props for this particular character. Oh my God, look at this little potion bottle. How could you say no? So, of course, um, as this design was growing, I decided she needed a bag because now with the dress and the horns and the makeup, she seems like a royal alchemist to me for some reason. And that's where we're going with this. So I am making her a little apothecary satchel or alchemy bag all out of craft foam and just painting it with some brown acrylic and then assembling it with hot glue. Um, hot glue was the MVP for this one because I had absolutely no clue what I was doing making this bag. Uh, I just watched a bunch of different doll customizers make other bags and just did a thing, made things happen. Apparently out of frame though. I even go back after I add a strap um, and I start using the soft pastels to give a little bit more dimension and texture to the bag itself, you know, kind of to make it look more 3D, but also to make it look like it's a real textile. And I did it all over this bag. I think here is when I sort of solidified her character a bit more. Um, I wanted her to be, like I had said, like a royal alchemist in a faraway magical land. That would explain the horns and the dragon scales on her face. She would definitely be the kind of court alchemist that would go and get her own herbs. Speaking of, I went ahead and filled that little potion bottle with little balled up pieces of yarn and some Swarovski crystals. I made a little strap out of craft foam again and painted it and hot glued it. So now that potion bottle is on the front of her pouch. I also added another one that I put inside, but yeah, that more or less finishes the bag for us. And then I moved on to more props. I made these flowers out of sewing pins with craft foam, paint, and uh, soft pastels, and those will go in her hair. 
And then I also decided, well, if she's an alchemist, she has to have some kind of spell book or a book of her alchemy potions. So I got that paper and some extra cardstock, cut out a billion little squares, put them in the right formation, got them all stacked nice and neat, glued some paper to bind it. I even went in and drew like words and runes to make it look a bit more realistic. And then I created a binding for it. Um, I used Doll Lightful's um, book tutorial that she has on YouTube and it worked out really well. I love the spell book that I made for her. Yay, even more new things to try. Um, I decided that I was going to make her some canvas boots and here are all the pieces that I more or less made myself. Um, just kind of figuring things out by trial and error and I'm doing it in the burgundy and a gold material and I also got these little eyelets off of Etsy and I will link them below but I got those little eyelets so that I can make a lacing effect on the boots later but this is just the tongue of the boot and the strap in the back and then these are the two I believe they're called vamps the side of a, of a shoe that have the eyelets where you lace up and then we have the toe cover that's actually made out of epoxy sculpt. And this is the fabric that will go over that toe cover. And I'm just using Fabri-Tac to stick this down so I get the sharp edges before I glue this fabric to the actual toe cover itself. And I'm gonna leave these tabs out. I cut the tabs so that it would make a curve easier, um, but these tabs actually don't attach to the toe cover. They're going to attach to the foam piece that I'm about to insert for the inner sole of the shoe. And here is our model doll to the rescue. So I put that on her foot and the little tabs are being glued to the inner sole of the shoe and then I glue that little flap to the inside to give it a sharp edge at the top. Then I'm taking the tip of the tongue and gluing that to the inside as well and placing it back on the foot um, over and over again throughout this process just to make sure I get all the shaping and the setting correct. Then it is time to work on the vamps or the sides of the shoe. I'm gluing down these tabs just to give everything those straight edges. And then the flaps at the bottom, I'm not gluing down yet because those are also going to glue to the inner sole. And we'll see that in a little bit. I even glue down the tab at the very top so that it gives that sort of clean edge to the top of the shoe when everything is finished. After that, I take both of the vamps and on this one back flap, I am going to glue them right sides together and this is gonna make the back seam of the shoe. While that is drying and while everything is lined up, I'm just punching holes through the front edge of the shoe so that I can then put the eyelets in afterwards. See, and this is how those vamps are gonna fit around the shoe. And those tabs at the bottom are gonna be glued to the inner sole. And then the outer sole will be glued on top of all of it to secure it together. Look at me actually sounding like I know something about shoes. This is just the strip of fabric that I cut out and glued for the back seam. You know that little like loop on the back of your shoe? Like that's what that is. And here it all is. We have the head, the body. I did some body blushing and did some painting on the hands to make it look like gloves her dress all embellished and finished, her bow with the snap, 
we have her boots that I finished. It took about seven or eight different tries, but I finally got it. And I made the heel and I guess sole of the shoe out of epoxy sculpt and painted it. We have her bag with her little potion bottles. So stinging cute. And honestly, my favorite piece of the whole set is the spell book. So let's put our girl together. And here she is, all assembled and done, and she looks divine. She looks so beautiful and gorgeous. And we've decided to name her Eliza Ann Hawthorne, or E-A-H. <laughs> but I think she's just so adorable and cute. I love this design. If you've noticed, her hair is straight. That's because when I reattached the head, the heat from the blow dryer straightened her hair back out. But I still think she looks beautiful. I love her little spell book. It makes me so happy. And just all of the little pieces that went together to make this such a beautiful look. She looks so whimsical. Overall, I am so happy and so proud with how she turned out, especially because she had a lot of new design elements like the horns, a lot of new things with her face up, a lot of props. So if you liked this video and if you like Eliza, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye.